everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this new series that I'm starting. This series I'm calling Portfolio Review and quite simply I'm going to be reviewing portfolios. I've asked people to send them in, uh, send me their name, where they're from, send the link to their portfolio, tell me a little bit about their experience and what they're doing right now and then tell me where they want to get to and what they're hoping their portfolio will help them get, whether that be a certain type of client or a certain job in a certain industry. Um, I want to review the portfolio with that in mind and give them some advice for achieving it and little improvements perhaps they could make to the portfolio. So uh, hopefully this video will be useful not only for the people who have sent in their portfolios for review but also for you watching to pick up some tips I suppose that might apply to your own portfolio. I've had a lot more submissions than I have time to show in this video so this will definitely just be the start of a series. Hopefully if you like it anyway make sure you give it a thumbs up if you do and if you'd like to send in your portfolio for review in a future episode then there's instructions and a link in the description that you can check out. But let's get into our first portfolio for review which is Sarah Fishers. So Sarah is from the UK and she is a midweight designer with three years experience. She's currently freelancing and looking particularly for typography work she says, so stuff like typesetting of books and brochures etc. And she enjoys all aspects of design. She's recently had a lot of illustration opportunities so that could be a new avenue to explore. So let's take a look at Sarah's portfolio with that in mind. So all in all Sarah has a pretty good portfolio design. There's nice uh, thumbnails of her work with a hover that shares the name of it. And if you click in there's nice big images of her work so you can see it up close. Something that I would really like to see from Sarah's portfolio is more about the process of designing and what went into it. Um, maybe some thought about the design decisions that she made throughout uh, working on these projects could be really interesting. For example with this logo it looks really nice but I don't know the reasons behind um, why these elements were chosen you know and why that color palette for example why that font so that would be really interesting to hear about from Sarah's perspective. Also notice that Sarah has a couple of websites in this portfolio along with the branding and typography work and I would recommend Sarah that you take a, have a think about whether that's the type of work you want to be doing more of. With your portfolio you really want to make it clear exactly what you do. So I think that perhaps if uh, typesetting, typography and illustration is what you're most interested in maybe you need to add that as a caption under your name for example and make those works the main feature of your portfolio and your site so that people know that that's what to expect from you. When you add websites into the mix it makes you seem like you're just more of an all-round designer which is definitely not a bad thing but I think personally that it's better to be a specialist. So if typography and illustration is what you want to do more of and you're not so keen on doing websites take them out of your portfolio and go all in on the typography and illustration. Next up we have Holly from Ohio. Now she says she's currently in her fourth year of work experience and her third year of study. So she's been doing work experience alongside doing studies which is absolutely awesome. Right now she's working for a university doing a lot of their print and promotional work which is cool and she says she's not quite sure which avenue of design she wants to stick with. Um, she'd really love to work for an agency and then eventually have her own studio. And she also says she really enjoys branding and layout design. So that in mind let's look at Holly's portfolio. She's got a Behance site rather than her own site and her own portfolio which is definitely not a bad thing especially when you're starting out it's you know having something to put your work is better than nothing but I personally think that having your own site is better than having a Behance profile and it's so easy to do these days with things like Squarespace as well you know it's easy to get set up with a custom branded sites you don't have the Behance branding all over it and all of their you know menu where it's easy for people to click away from your page and it also shows things like these view counts here that really aren't necessary and um, you know relevant to someone who's hiring you for a job. So that's something to keep in mind that when you can Holly I would switch to having your own site rather than just going with the Behance portfolio. I'll also say too that it's okay that you don't know exactly what you want to specialize in yet. I know I was just saying to Sarah that if she really wants to focus on type and illustration she should like go in all in on that and make it very clear in her work but if you're not sure what you want to do then it's okay for your portfolio to still be general. Specializing is something you definitely want to aim for as you get further down your career because you're going to get better opportunities and be seen as more of an expert in whatever field it is that you choose. But to start out with it's totally fine and often actually encouraged for more junior positions to have a broad range of work in your portfolio. I really like that Holly doesn't have too many pieces of work in her portfolio. I think that's often a temptation when you're studying to just put absolutely everything you design in there. So I like that you've been very selective, that's really good. I would say it's a piece of advice to take student work off the start of all of these pieces that you have in here because rightly or wrongly um, sometimes when you're applying for a job people will look down on student work and think that oh it doesn't matter because it was just done 
for a university project. I personally don't believe in that. I think work is work and you've worked on it, you've got a process behind it, so you should you should show it and it's valid to have in your portfolio. I like that within these projects you've put a little bit about it um, and shown a bit of the detail like the colour palette and the typefaces etc. But um, like I was just talking about with Sarah, talking about your process is going to be really good as well. So if you can do that, then that's great. So yeah, take student work off of those titles. I don't know if within Behance you can have like a description at the side of the project, or I think I've seen some people have like an image that's a description as part of this um, like series we see here. So maybe you could do that and explain a little bit more about the project and your reasonings behind it. And you can just mention in there that it was done for a university brief. Okay, next up we have Merle's portfolio. So Merle is a designer from North Carolina. Um, he's enjoying what he's doing right now, but doesn't want to stay in it forever. He's liking logo design specifically, and that's what he's wanting to get more work in. But more generally, he likes anything to do with visual identity design and prefers working one-on-one -on -one with clients rather than freelancing for an agency, which I totally understand. So I really wanted to talk about Merle's portfolio because I think it's a really great example of how portfolios can be about more than just your work. So at the top of it here, Mel's got his logo and branding design. And then he's got a great quote from Paul Rand that automatically puts you in the state of mind of, you know, what a logo really is. And it shows some deeper understanding there, which I really like. It's got some uh, testimonials, which is great. And also some blog posts and an FAQ. Initially, looking at the site feels really professional and it feels like you've really thought it through and that you're a professional freelancer and you're there to be hired. Mel has a really great info page as well, which I really liked, which clearly details exactly what it is that he does, and also details his design process, which is really cool for clients to read before they come on board. One piece of advice first up, I would say, is to move your hire me button further up the top, because you don't see it until you get right down the bottom. Um, and I don't know, having it higher up might encourage more clicks on it. Maybe you could even rename this info page in general to be the Hire Me page. Merle also has a blog, which I really like seeing in a portfolio site. I think that's great because it means it gives you a space to write about your chosen field and topic of interest or whatever, and a chance for you to further prove that you're an expert on it and that you're the person to hire. Going into Merle's work, um, I really like that he shows a lot of the process behind the creation of these pieces. So the mood board, typography, and you know, just a little bit of explanation of how he came to that final solution. I really like that the logos are shown in situations, so they're on a product or whatever for their intended purpose. That's really good, gives context. But what I'd really like to see is that when you click into one of these sections, you see the logo perhaps flat or, you know, on flat color or just in black and white up the very top. So you can just initially see the logo in more detail from that initial picture. Um, before seeing all the mood board and things like that, because I think that means you're presenting the concept and then explaining the reasoning behind it. But yeah, in general, this portfolio is really well laid out and there's a lot of great information in there. Um, keep writing on your blog, Mel, because I think that that will definitely help you get to that next stage of your career because you're just further proving that you're an expert in your subject matter and keep on being selective about what work you include as well. Cool, so there we go. That is the first episode in this portfolio review series. Let me know what you thought about it. I'm definitely open for feedback, constructive criticism or whatever, whatever you'd like to see from these videos going forward because I do want to make it a series. So let me know down below in the comments what you thought and remember to check out the link in the description if you want to submit yours for a future episode. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye.